All right, this one here is going to be about John Gotti surviving an MCC detention center. It stands for Metropolitan Correctional Detention Center. Now, so we're going to break this down. I'm going to tell you how he used to do it. Now, y'all can pay attention, sit back, enjoy the ride. I want y'all to know if there's any rat bastards or flip-flop wearing and public trolls. I'm going to give y'all 30 seconds to tap out while I play the intro because we don't need none of that over here distracting us from these jewels. All right, let's go. Ah, you know what it is. Unique Mech Audio, man. This one here going to be about John Gotti in the Metropolitan Correction Center. Now, they was closing MDC, right? That's the Metropolitan Detention Center. That's the joint for Brooklyn, right? So now, they brought everybody over there to MCC, and, you know, when they bring them in, you know, John Gotti, uh, they put him on, I think it was 11 North, right? They had John on 11 North. So he on 11 North. My man Shamik up there. Shamik run the tier for the New York call. Shamik was with the Unknown. You know, that's the name of the drugs they used to have. They had drugs that was called Unknown, right? And that was Fat Manny, Shamik, True God, rest in peace to all the brothers. Uh, two of them died in prison. True God made it home to die on the street, you know? Now... So, John Gotti used to come out to sell. He on some fly guy stuff, right? I mean, you know, don't take nothing from him. So, don't worry about my sarcasm. I'm just having fun right now. <laughs> you know, I'm riding, you know. Let me ride, man. Let me ride. So, John Gotti come out. He used to have his hair all moosed up. And, you know what I mean? Every strand was in order and in place. You couldn't tell him nothing. Then he had the, the white V-neck T-shirts, right? You know, the V-neck T-shirts. And that was always ironed up, pressed, and creased, you know, and this is the way he came out. So whenever John Gotti come out to sell, you know, like I said, as he came out to sell, there was a bunch of super groupies. That's what we're going to call them. It was a bunch of super groupies that everybody would hold the phone so as soon as he come out, hey, Johnny, I got the phone. Hey, Johnny, you need the phone? Hey, Johnny, here's the phone. And everybody got a phone trying to hand him. So John Gotti does his little walk over there to him. He does his little ditty bop. So he goes over there and he snatches the phone. Ah, you know, he dials the number, right? So now after he dials the number, you got, you know, dudes sitting there, hey, Johnny, you need anything? You need anything? And he give him the look like, don't you see I'm on the phone? You know, like, oh, my bag, my bag, sorry, boss, sorry, boss. And they ran off. That's how they used to, you know, you know, kiss up on them. But that was the Europeans. Let's get that right. That wasn't the black dudes, you know. Now, Shamik ran the black dudes. So the black dudes like to watch Yo! MTV rap at the time. They used to have it on in the joint, right? So, you know, on the tier that they had them on, it was like, it's like eight cells, four on each side. And John Gotti's cell is in the back. Now, in the back, they had a little table. So... You know, there was no reason for anybody to go in the back because there was no window in the back. So it was like an unspoken rule that nobody went in the back area unless you live back there and somebody else lived right across from John Gotti. So somebody went to go see him. They walked in that area and John would just stick his head out and look, you know, and then he'll go back in here, nod at whoever it was. And, you know, everybody knew what time it was. So they used to play tabletops, you know, casino, chess, checkers, you know, rummy 500, spades, P-knuckle, all that on the little tables in the unit. But everybody knew, like I said, an unspoken rule, don't go play on that back table by John Gotti sale. He never had to say it. They just respected him like that to give him his privacy for the dawn that he was. Now, no one was allowed to go back there, like I said, because if you go back there, you either live back there or you're being nosy. And we don't even want none of that crap going on, right? So one day, John Gotti comes out of cell, and of course, the flunky's holding the phone. Hey, Johnny, hey, Johnny. He gets on the phone. And you know, John talks loud because you know he's one of those cocky, boisterous New York brothers, right? So John goes, he snatches the phone. He get on the phone, and, uh, you know, he tells him... Uh, you know, he, he, he tells the bookie, right? He tells the bookie, put 20 on uh, 
on such and such a horse. It was some thoroughbred race, big thoroughbred, big time race with uh, horse race going on. And he said, put 20 on a horse, you know, and everybody's listening. Maybe let's say they gingerbread, you know, put 20 on gingerbread, you know, say everybody listening, you know. So, you know, of course, a couple of petty dudes say, damn, he did all that to bet $20. <laughs> you know what I mean? Come to find out he betting twenty thousand dollars on a horse from in the penitentiary. This is how John Gotti get down. He was a super gambler. If anybody know John Gotti, ever been with him on the street or been with him in the prison, he was the same way in the prison. John Gotti was like this. Let me ride. You know, John Gotti was the type that if there was two roaches, right? If there's two roaches, you know, over in the corner of the dorm, John Gotti would say, I got $100 this New York roach beat this old Carolina roach. <laughs> you know what I mean? He done gave them locations, you know? And he'll pick the, the, the strongest looking roach and he'll, and he'll bet $100, you know what I mean? That that roach would get from that side to the other side and then one of his little minions would go over there in the back and they'll blow on the roach from the back and the roach, you know, the little wings will fly up, whoop, and he'll jump, you know? And they sitting there betting on, on, on a roach and he's calling, go New York, this John. Go New York, go New York, go. You know what I mean? And Everybody's cheering the roach on and everybody's around. You know, we ain't got nothing to do, so all this is just, you know, recreation and fun, right? That, that's what that's why they called him uh, you know, the Don like that. Because he was he was so arrogant. You see the smile? He's getting a mugshot. Look at the picture behind me. He's getting a mugshot and he's smiling. So he got everybody cheering for a roach. You know what I mean? And dudes was actually side betting on the roach race. You know? And he's calling the roach that he like New York. He loves anything New York. Let's get that straight. He don't care what team it is. He don't care what the odds are. Even if they're going to lose, he's going to put a grip on New York. So he was sweet when it come to gambling with if you want to go against New York. Because, like, he used to always go with the Knicks. And, you know, the Knicks never made it past, you know, Miami to go to the finals or nothing like that. But he still betted on them. You know, that was his thing. Right? So now... Uh, he loved to bet on anything, like I said. Right? So he bet the little 20 grand on a, um, on, on a horse race. So... The race was getting ready to come on. It was a big thoroughbred, you know, annual race going on. It's getting ready to start. So dudes was down there watching, what's her name? Uh, downtown Judy Brown. You know what I mean? He watch, they watching downtown Judy Brown. And while they watching that, uh, John sits there and he's telling his little, you know, minion, some one of his lieutenants. He's like, man, I got this 20 grand on this race. I didn't even care about the 20 grand, but I just wanted to rock, watch the race, you know? But in the, in the downstairs pod part, like right where I'm at behind me, where the TVs is at, everybody's down there and they watching, you know, UMTV, you know, raps with downtown Julie Brown. Yeah, go ahead and laugh. That's what we did. Let's get a round of applause for the downtown Julie Brown. <laughs> All right. All right, all, right, all, right, all right, relax, man, relax, man. Could I ride? Could I ride? Thank you. So now, everybody watching downtown Judy Brown and John Gotti over there, he wanted to watch the race. He all excited about this race because the big annual joint where they're giving out big gold cups and all that for the winner. He got 20 grand on the joint. So now, while he's sitting there doing that, he had his workout partner. His workout partner was the homie Shamik, like I said, from... um. Uh, uh, the unknown out of Brooklyn. You know, Manny was, the, you know, the alleged leader of that, right? So now, he got 20 grand on his joint. They're sitting there, and they get ready to race, and everybody, you know, on the main floor is watching Yo! MTV raps with downtown Judy Brown, right? So after he talked to his lieutenant, his lieutenant said, man, you know, that's crazy. They want to watch this stuff. And they whining, geeking them on, but they know they can't do nothing. There's a whole bunch of blacks and Puerto Ricans and Dominicans down there, and they got the TV and, you know, Shamik, he running it, you know. He Puerto Rican um, from out Brooklyn, but he ran with Manny, who was also Puerto Rican, and True God, who was black. But, you know, no racism was all about getting money. Only race we knew was green, you know, like the cash app. Oh, if there's a cash app up there with my picture on it and got an S at the end of the name, Halls, that's not me. All right? I don't have an S on the end of my name, so you know. They duplicated it now, put a picture of me up there and all that, but we ain't even going for all that. But anyway, let me ride back to the story. All right? So now, John Gotti sitting there, and Shamik was his workout partner. Him and Shamik was real cool. They used to work out and all that. So John calls Shamik over, and he tell him, yo, you know, I'm trying to... um." 
I'm trying, I'm trying to watch the horse race. I got a little money on this horse, and I wanted to watch the race. So Shamik said, yo, but, you know, there's too many brothers down there watching. I could go put the TV on anything I want, but, you know what I mean? You my man and all, but, you know, we still on man time, and we got to respect the other brothers, and I'm quite sure nobody down there want to watch horse race. So, I mean, you know, you, you can't watch it right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? So... You know, John started laughing. He said, man, that's why I like you, man, because you're real diplomatic, man, and I could always come to you when I got a problem with anybody in the unit and you always mediated or, you know, set it up if they want to rock and roll because Johnny ain't had no problems slinging his knuckles, <laughs> you know? So now, so the two of them up there on the joint and they talking about this big race that's getting ready to come on, you know? So while they talking about the race getting ready to come on, John Gotti tell them, he said, who you think is going to win the race? Shamik said, man, you know, you showed me the stats yesterday. The one you picked is good. You know, what you put on it? And he said, nah, I just put a little 20. You know, so Shamik knew right what he was talking about. He talked about that's all. <laughs> you know what I mean? And John looked at him and said, what, 20 grand ain't enough? And John said, uh, my man Shamik said, nah, that ain't enough. So John said, all right. He, he, yo, give me the phone. He get back on the phone. He said, put 50 on him. <laughs> you know? So he go put 50 on him. So he said, yo. He looked at him. He looked at uh, Shamik. He said, if it lose, I'm going to hold you responsible. <laughs> you know what I mean? And if it win, you know, I got you. So Samig said, oh, man, if you're telling me you got me for win, I know he's going to win. So he said, all right, so now, you know, instead of them going to watch the game, uh, uh, the game, instead of them going to watch the horse race, you know, they went – and they went in his cell. They sat down and, you know, John had one of his people come in and they bought their little turkey sandwiches in there and, you know, the mayonnaise and the, the hot jalapeno peppers because they ate good because the police used to bring in everything. I'm talking about from steaks to lobsters to everything else. This is John Gotti we're talking about. So they broke out the food and they all in there eating and John listened to the race and he's yelling at this radio at the top of his lungs where... The police would run upstairs because they heard all this noise and they think something going on and everybody just sitting there watching TV, but they hearing the noise coming from, you know, one of the cells. But they already knew it was John Gotti because he does that when he bet he gets excited. That was his pastime. So they sitting in the horse racing and he running and he galloping and he galloping, right? So now when the horse win, he jump up and he tells Shamik, you the man, you the man. That's why you my brother. So he told him, man, I got you. You know what I mean? I, think, yeah, I don't know exactly how much because, you know, I ain't want to get in their business. But I think he said Shamik a little 10 grand just for encouraging him to double his bet, you know, from 20 to 50, which is not double for you rat bastards. But I figured I'd leave a loophole for you to say uh, 20 and, and 20 is 40. It's not 50. So you wrong. You need make up audio. Well, take that with you on the way out, you scumbag. <laughs> you know what I mean? But that's how it is. So, you know, that's how we used to have fun. There was another dude. I'm going to bring another character in here. I might tell you some stories about him. Right? I'm in Lewisburg with uh, Tony Montana. You know, I ain't talking about Scarface from the movie. Um, Tony Montana was from out of Queens, right? Official dude. He home now too, I know, but he on the low on the radar. Tony Montana was another one, right? Any New York team this man bet on. I mean, these brothers was diehard New York fans. New York don't have a chance in hell in winning the game. But they putting up five, ten grand on the game, losing, and everybody getting a piece of it. But their money was long like that, where the whole thing was, you know, they put their money up and they hope for the win, and they never win. But that's the way it was, so you understand. But that's how we do it in the joint, man. You know what I mean? Gambling is real big. They got tickets in there where you could do, a, you know, yo, you got dudes that have put one stamp. A stamp is worth twenty five cent. We'll put one stamp on a bet, and if he win that, he get he win. Let's say it might be fifty to one. You know what I mean? So he'll win 50 stamps. They 20 stamps in a book, you know, that's two and a half books. So he win, you know, like 1350. You know what I mean? Off of 25 cent. And the dude happy with that, because with that he go buy a bottle of wine, you know what I mean? And go get a sandwich or, you know, some zoom zooms and wham whams from the store man and, you know, chill out for the night from a one stamp bet. They had like, you know, um a five pick, a three pick, a ten pick. The ten pick was for the thirsty dudes. Imagine you picking a ticket and winning ten out of ten. But you believe it or not, dudes was hitting it. And if you got these dudes to pick a bet for you right now while you're on the street, you'll blow up. Because, you know, John Gotti used to go to certain dudes that he knew was good with these little, you know, one and two stamp bets, you know, but just didn't have enough. But they hit every time they put a ticket in. They'd be like, give me a bet for the day. 
you know. He gave him a bet, you know. John Gotti might give him, you know, 10 books, you know, that's $50 just for giving him the bet. And then John Gotti put $500 on the ticket, you know what I mean, and clean up, might win 10 grand, you know what I mean? But, you know, that's how it is, how we pass time on the inside. But I want y'all to understand that even though John Gotti is who he is, he get all the respect in the world. Let's not take that from him. But when you go in a federal penitentiary, you're not the only wolf. You're not the only big dog. You're not the only gladiator. Because don't forget, we had people like Juan Ramon Mata. Juan Ramon Mata, if y'all from Honduras, y'all know who he is. If you don't know, Google him. You know what I mean? I was locked up with Juan Ramon Mata. This man was locked up for sipping tons into the United States. You know, he had big white horses and ranches over in Honduras. They named a street after him in Honduras. He got a cigar named after him. He owned big casinos in Las Vegas. You know what I mean? So I say all that to say that even though John Gotti, the man, got all that, you still had men that was bigger than him, you know? And then you had people that was bigger than Warren Ramon Mata. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's keep it 100. But that's what it is. But everybody respected their position. They respected the way it was at, and they keep it funky. You understand what I'm saying? So I just wanted to bring you this little John Gotti joint because I ain't really been feeling like doing the videos because I'm so disappointed and I be in my body sometimes looking at all this frivolous crap on YouTube with everybody telling on everybody. It, 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 it. It disrupts my, my chi. You know, my chi is not, is not comfortable when that type of thing happened. But I just want y'all to fully understand, man, that we don't do none of that faking over here at Unique Maker Audio. If you're a rat bastard, if you ain't trying to get the jewels, if you don't want to know how gangsters move on a gangster channel, then you need to find somewhere else to go. All right? So let me put the book up so you can see it one time. You know what I mean? Cop the book of Ron Harlem, you know? Cop the book of Ron Harlem. My cash app is on the screen. It don't have my picture on the cash app. And there's no S on my last name. And there's no number one in my last name. So let's get that right. Now we're about to tap out. Been on here long enough. I might do something else later tonight because I feel good today, man. Just thinking about the good old times, man. With all the good comrades. All right. Cheers. 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 Toast the crime. 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 Out the can of 26, yeah. he back on the strip, uh -huh. getting back in the mix. Yeah. What he mentions is a gift. Trust. You stand up ten toes down, and I suggest you pay attention to this. Real. Take a little gully posse and put it in haul. Uh. He cut from the bottom, back. came up from the bottom. Back. Drop the book, you should go and get it. The Instagram it. page and the YouTube, you could go and visit. Yeah. Then you could consider yourself linked in. Sit front row and get jewels from a kingpin. Uh. How he went through it, so you ain't gotta go do it. Uh -huh. Did not pay attention would be stupid. Talking about a man that probably put your grandfather on probably the reason that him and your grams got along a man that generated millions on the block did his time never squilling to the cops make an audio Like two G's in the 90s. Yeah. Drop top beamer, so shine. Yeah. I let Shorty go, she was wine. Yeah. Treat her like my past, she behind me. Yeah. Spin a couple bands on the dapper yeah. dan. You be back again, getting green like a Packers fan. Yeah. No cap, it's a roaring uptown. Yeah. They be horn uptown, Dominican bust down. Word. Now we on the positive. Word. You we got a lot to give. Yes. Now you trying to stop the kids from being an operative. Uh. So take uh. heed, homie Linda Ed. Uh. He started in uptown, he gon' finish dead. Uptown, but uptown. now it ain't about selling drugs, buying cars. It's nope. about buying property to make the community yard So we can give back to the youth them Cause they the truth them And bless up to all the rude men yeah. 